Let's Protocol. Join me as we cover breast ultrasound protocols on this edition, Screening Breast Ultrasound. Let's talk about the protocol for a screening breast ultrasound. And this is the protocol when the exam is completely normal and you have found zero pathology. It's important to know what images to take. The first thing that you need to do is to split the breast into quadrants, the upper outer quadrant, the upper inner quadrant, the lower inner quadrant, and the lower outer quadrant. And you are gonna scan each quadrant in both breasts, both the right breast and the left breast, in both the radial and the anti-radial planes. For each quadrant, you're going to document two negative images. A negative image means that it's just normal breast tissue. And it's really important in these images to make it look like normal breast tissue because you've already evaluated that tissue and you've determined there's nothing there. So you're saying to the radiologist, hey, I've completely looked through this breast tissue and there's nothing there. And your negative images demonstrate that to the radiologist. Really important to not have shadow shadowing in there that could mimic a mass or a pseudo mass. Fat lobules love to look like pseudo masses in the breast. So really carefully interrogate your negative images to ensure that it all looks like normal breast tissue before you take the image. For these negative images for each quadrant, you're gonna annotate which breast you're in, you're gonna annotate which quadrant you're in, and you're gonna annotate your transducer orientation. For instance, for the right breast, I would start with right breast, upper outer quadrant, and I take a radial image and then I would do a right breast upper outer quadrant anti-radial image and then I'd move on to my next quadrant and I take a right breast lower outer quadrant radial image and a right breast lower outer quadrant anti-radial image and go through all the quadrants documenting your two negative images for each quadrant and then switch over to the opposite breast. I generally tend to like to scan the right breast first However, that's just a personal preference. It doesn't matter what order the breasts are scanned in as long as you've covered all of the breast tissue. As I move to the left breast, I would then do my left breast upper outer quadrant radial picture, my left breast upper outer quadrant anti-radial picture, and then move through all the various quadrants just like I did for the right breast. It also does not matter what quadrant order you scan in. You can do it in any order. However, you wanna position the patient properly to best visualize the breast tissue. I would would generally position the patient into a lateral oblique position with a wedge pillow behind their back to scan the outer part of the breast and generally a supine position to scan the inner portions of the breast. I would generally do both inner quadrants and then do both outer quadrants or vice versa. Okay so we're continuing on with our screening breast ultrasound protocol and this is for a normal exam when you've already evaluated all the tissue and know that everything's normal. Next I would move on to the subareolar region. This is annotated SA and this is the tissue that's back behind the nipple and you want to scan the tissue that's back behind the nipple in both a transverse and a sagittal plane. When you've looked through that tissue and you've ensured that there's nothing hiding back there, you want to document two negative subareolar images and you want to annotate them with which breast you're in, SA for subareolar, and also your transducer orientation. For the right breast, I would say right breast, SA, transverse and then right breast SA sagittal and then the same thing for the left breast there's two ways that you can take these negative images. You can take the negative subareolar image where you're angling away from the nipple and not including the nipple in the picture, or you can take the image with the nipple clearly visualized in the picture. If you take an image with the nipple in the picture, you need to place the word nipple on top of the nipple on the image. That annotation must be there. So it's not somehow mistaken as a mass. I prefer to angle away from the nipple and take the image without the nipple in the picture only because the nipple produces such strong shadowing that it obscures some of the tissue and I just as a personal preference like to see the tissue behind the nipple versus having it obscured by the posterior shadowing. However, it's most important that you follow the preference of your radiologist. Okay, so moving on to the next section.
section of our screening breast ultrasound protocol, and this is for our normal exam. The next section that we're gonna look at is the axillary tail. This is the normal extension of breast tissue that extends up into the axilla. This breast tissue is connected to the upper outer quadrant of the breast. Most commonly, I will document this area as I'm scanning the upper outer quadrant of the breast, just because I'm already in that region. This is a very crucial area to ensure that you have evaluated because it's not uncommon for a breast cancer or a mass to hide within this tissue because it is breast tissue. So you want to ensure that you scan both axillary tails bilaterally and you want to scan them in the radial and the anti-radial planes. It's really crucial when you're doing a breast ultrasound that you scan in radial and anti-radial planes because this is going to demonstrate the breast pathology in the most accurate shape. If you use sagittal and transverse planes in the breast tissue, it can underestimate the size of the mass since most masses are ductal in origin and the ducts follow a radial course in the breast. For your axillary tail, you want to document your two negative axillary tail images. This tells the radiologist that you fully evaluated that tissue and you do not visualize anything in that area. And you want to annotate those images with which axillary tail you're in, either the right side or the left, and then also your transducer orientation. For instance, for the right side, you would say right axillary tail, and you can abbreviate this as AX for axillary, and then the word tail, and then uh, radial, and then the next image would be right axillary tail anti-radial. And then do the same thing for the left side. Now I get a lot of questions about the subareolar region of the breast. Why would I take my negative images in a sagittal and a transverse plane if the best way to scan the breast is in a radial and an anti-radial plane? And that's an excellent question. And the reason is because unless you find a pathology back behind the nipple, it's really hard to figure out what plane is radial and what plane is anti-radial unless you're aligning those scanning planes behind the nipple with an actual pathology. Now let's say I find something at the 10 o'clock position. Then it's really easy to figure out, okay, this is 10 o'clock radial and this is the 10 o'clock subareolar anti-radial image. However, if I'm just taking a general subareolar picture, it's really hard to figure out, well, what's radial and what's anti-radial because you're not in a specific quadrant of the breast and there's no reference point. So unless you have a pathology there to use as a reference point to which plane is radial, you definitely want to use sagittal and transverse just to document your negative image because then you can actually tell what is sagittal and what is transverse back behind the nipple. Now, if you have pathology behind the nipple, you want to document that pathology in radial and anti-radial planes. And your radial plane will be radial to the mass and your anti-radial plane will be anti-radial to the mass itself. Interested in more videos on ultrasound? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in for our next video on Wednesdays.